Hello, welcome back to the 2023 Vectric User Group Meeting. I'm Todd and I'm part of the marketing department here at Vectric. In this video, I'm going to show you a little bit about how V-Carb inlays work. Before we do that though, I want to talk a little bit about what a normal inlay looks like. I'm going to use my little cardboard templates here. So the normal inlay, what you'd have is a pocket and you'd have a plug or a positive part that fits inside the pocket. Now that looks, works really, really well for things with straight sides and you don't mind not having a whole lot of detail. But what if you want to do something that's highly detailed, like a tree or even a gingerbread man? Well, we're going to need to go ahead and employ the V-carb inlay technique, which is the same sort of idea. It's taking a pocket, but using your v carve bit, so you take into account the geometry on the sidewalls of your pocket. You're gonna create a plug using the same v bit, and we can go ahead and place that plug or glue that plug inside the pocket, and you'll see that because of the way we do this in the software, the face of the plug is slightly wider, so it ends up fetching up on the inside edges of your pocket, and then we can go ahead and surface the top of that, and when we're all done, what we end up with is a nice inlay that looks seamless. And with the V-Carve inlay technique, you can do really crazily detailed pieces. So let's go into the software. Let me show you how this all works in there. We're gonna be doing this demonstration in V-Carve Desktop. But before we get started, let me go in and share some information with you about how we are gonna work this inlay in our software. Before we get started, let's go over a couple abbreviations. Start depth is SD, flat depth is FD, and depth of cut is DC. Start depth plus your flat depth equals your depth of cut, and that depth of cut should be the same on both your pocket and your plug. For most inlays, you'll have two contrasting pieces of wood, one for the pocket and one for the plug. We'll be using the same set of vectors to create our pocket and our plug. When we go ahead and create the pocket, we'll be removing all of the material inside of the vectors. When it comes to creating the plug, we're gonna plunge down on those same vectors at a start depth that's less than the depth of cut of our pocket. The remainder of that will be what we call our flat depth. And because we're removing material from both sides of that vector and stopping short, then the top of our plug is actually wider than the base of our pocket. So when we go ahead and glue those up, that difference, that flat depth difference, will show up at the top of our pocket and at the bottom of our pocket. So when it comes to setting up your toolpaths, we're going to be using that same set of vectors and a V-carve toolpath. For our pocket, we're going to have a start depth of 0 0.0 and a flat depth of 0 0.2. We're going to use a 60-degree V-bit. Now keep in mind the same V-bit needs to be used for both the pocket and the plug. Don't forget that with your pocket, you may need to use a clearance tool depending on the design. With the plug, we're going to have a start depth of 0.18, a flat depth of 0 0.02, and that same 60-degree V-bit. Now, when it comes to the plug, you are going to need to use that clearance tool because you need to remove all that material outside of those vectors. You won't need to remember all of this because we're going to include this handy PDF in with your project files for your reference later on. Now, once you have it all glued up and the glue is set, you're going to need to go ahead and run a surfacing toolpath to remove the top bit of that plug. The result should be a beautiful looking inlay. Okay, let's go back to vCarve Desktop and let's create a brand new file. It's going to be a single sided job and the width of this job is going to be 8 by 8 and the thickness is going to be 0.75 of an inch. Now I'm not going to ever cut this, this is just for demonstration, um, so these numbers are just fictional, but I felt that an 8 by 8 space was a good size for an inlay and obviously our plug that we're going to use to fit into our pocket will be smaller. So when we create that job, we're going to create a sheet that's slightly smaller than this one. We're going to be using inches, we'll be zeroing off our material surface. Our data will be set to the bottom left hand corner. And because there isn't any 3D content in here, I'm just going to use a standard. But if I did add in some 3D content, I'd want to go up to very high in the end. Now I want to make sure that this material reflects the actual material I'm going to be creating uh, my pocket into. So in this case, it's going to be dark oak and I can just go ahead and press OK. And you'll see that when I look at my 3D view, we've got a nice oak 
workspace there for me to start with. Perfect. Now to get started, I'm gonna need some vectors. Now I've got some vectors already created. I'm gonna assume that you know how to already draw your own vectors or you can do a bitmap trace or you can find some online to use. So I'm gonna go and import those in. It's a very simple gingerbread man outline. So I'm gonna open that up and you'll see it gets imported right into the center of my job. Now with that comes along a couple extra layers here that I don't need. So just to make sure that my file is nice and clean, I'm going to right click on this layer here that's called zero. and I'm going to delete that and I'm going to do the same with this one here. So I only have one layer left. It's going to ask me to go ahead and move my data someplace. Yeah, I'm going to move that onto layer one and I'm going to click OK. So now I should only have one layer and all of these vectors are on that layer. Now with these vectors, I've got enough to create my actual uh, pocket, but before I do that, I'm, I know ahead of time that I'm gonna need an extra vector. I need a vector that I'm gonna use to cut out the outline of my plug width, and also that I'm gonna need that same outline to be able to surface my plug once I have everything all glued up. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this outside vector, and I'm gonna offset that outwards a quarter of an inch, offset that out, we'll close that. And now that's the vector we're going to use to surface our plug with and use as our cutout vector for our plug. So I'm going to go ahead and keep everything nice and neat and tidy. I'm going to move that to a new layer and I'm going to call this new layer surfacing. And we're going to give this a different color green and we'll click OK. Now we have everything we need to create the pocket for our V inlay. So let's bring up our toolpath tab. We may as well go ahead and tile our views. Okay, and we're gonna check our material setup to make sure that's fine. So again, we've got our thickness of our material is a quarter inch, datum set to the bottom left, zeroing off our material surface. Our model position is at the very top, which is fine. Now we wanna make sure that we double check our rapid Z gaps above our material and of course our start position. Okay, make sure those are safe and appropriate for your job. We can go ahead and click okay. Now let's grab these vectors here and that's all we need to create the pocket for our V inlay. So let's go to our VCarve toolpath. We're gonna to start depth of zero because we're gonna start right at our material surface and our depth of cut or our flat depth is gonna be 0.2. So these two added together will equal our depth of cut, which again is just our flat depth in this case. We're going to use the 60 degree V bit to do most of the work for us. And we're going to include in a clearance bit. I'm not sure whether or not we're going to need this or not, but I'm going to put that in there anyway. Um, it will help out in the end if there's any big sort of voids in your um, inlay, big areas that you might want to go in and clean all that um, material out after you do your V bit. Um, and in the end, this is kind of nice too, because our software will tell us whether or not we're actually going to use that. So we're going to use offset tooling and we're going to call this pocket. And we can go ahead and calculate that and see right away. It's going to tell us that we're not going to need to use this clearance uh, tool. So that's all right. Let's click okay. And you'll see we have two tool paths, but the clearance one is empty. There's nothing there at all. Nothing's been calculated. So if I turn that off, turn off that V-bit tool path here, then you'll see that it it's, hasn't calculated anything at all because that tool won't fit anywhere. But we have our V-bit here. Top tip is that if for some reason you did need that clearance bit in there, you're always gonna wanna run your V-bit first. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you go ahead and move your V-bit to the top of your tool pass tree. That's only really so that you remember when you save them off that that one gets run first. Or if you happen to have a tool changer, then you want that one to be run first and then come back and go ahead and run that clearance tool. That way you won't have any chipping and so on or there's less chance of any chipping going on. So let's go ahead and preview those tool paths and we'll see what we get. And that's what we get. There's a very simple V-carve tool path but we know exactly how deep it is, that 0.2 of an inch, okay? Now let's go back over to our 2D view for a second, and we might as well just maximize that for a sec. So now we need to create a uh, another sheet. Because we're gonna be using a lighter material for our plug, then we're gonna create a different sheet for that. 
and it's a different size as well. So let's go to our sheet. And we also go ahead and rename this first sheet that we have. We'll call this pocket. Okay, and then we're going to add in a new sheet and we'll call this sheet plug. And then we're going to select that sheet and we're going to go ahead and edit that sheet. Okay, now this sheet is going to be smaller than our other sheets. So we're going to make this four by four. Now, in most cases, your plug material is going to be thinner than your pocket material. But in my case, I'm going to leave it just around the same because that way I can demonstrate something a little bit later on that's important when you go to run your surfacing toolpath. So we're going to zero off the top of our material. The datum was at the bottom corner. Again, nothing, there's no 3D content here, so we can use our standard or fastest modeling resolution. We're going to grab a material, and then instead of using dark oak, we're going to use light oak, and we can click OK. And let's go ahead and tile our toolpath so we can see what's going on, or tile our window, excuse me, so we can see what's going on. OK, let's go back to our pocket sheet, and we're going to go ahead and select everything that's there, and we're going to copy that to sheet plug. And when we do that, you'll see that it gets copied in the same location but it's not in the center of our job. So we're gonna go over to our plug sheet, select all those vectors, go up to our drawing tab, and we'll center that in our material. We'll close that down. Now we can go ahead and start to think about how we're gonna create this plug. So when we create a plug, we wanna make sure that anything that we've V-carved out in our first toolpath is raised in on our plug. So we're gonna select everything that's here, including that outside vector. And we're going to go in over to our V-carve toolpath here. And we're going to create our plug using some of those special magical numbers that I showed you earlier. This should be 0.18 of an inch. So we're going to plunge right down on those lines. And then we're going to have a flat depth of 0 0.02. Now those two added together are that depth of cut of 0.2 of an inch. And that's important. We're going to use the same V-bit. In this case, we are going to use that clearance tool because we need to clear all that material outside of these vectors, okay? So anywhere from this vector outwards, from this vector inwards to his eyes, all this needs to be cleared out. And to do that efficiently and fast, using that clearance tool is the way to go. And we're going to go ahead and call this plug. And we'll calculate that. Okay, now we have two tool paths here. Again, I'd said to you before, we're going to make sure that we run that V-bit first. So we're going to move the V-bit to the top, and we're going to turn off this second toolpath here, our clearance tool, just so we can see what's going to be happening. You'll see that in my 2D view, I've got my solid preview of my toolpaths turned on. So you can turn that on and off. But we're going to go ahead and preview that visible toolpath. That's what we're going to see after we run that V-bit. And then we can go ahead and run that clearance tool. And we'll see what we have there. And that's perfect. All the raised parts here should fit nicely into the recessed areas in our pocket. And it should actually stop a little bit early, that 0.02 of an inch. So that way we have a nice tight fit and there's room at the bottom of our pocket for some glue to sit in there. And, any, and there's some room at the top for some glue to come out if it has to, which is perfect for what we want. Now, the last thing we need to do is to create a cutout tool path for this. So we're gonna close this. And we're going to choose that outside vector here. We're going to create a profile toolpath. Start depth at zero. We're going to cut all the way through our material. So that's 0.75 of an inch. We're going to use that end mill, that same end mill that's already in the machine from running that clearance tool. Save us a tool change. We're going to cut outside that line. We're going to leave no allowance offset, but we're going to come back to that in a second. And we're going to go ahead and call this cutout. Now, in most cases, you're going to want to add in some tabs, but because I'm not going to cut this ever, then I don't need to worry about those tabs at all. So we're going to go ahead and calculate that, and we'll preview that visible toolpath. And then I can double-click on this waste material, and this is what I'll end up with for a plug. Now, there's a slight remnants here of that V-bit that there's some extra stuff here that we want to get rid of. Now, we want this plug to go in nice and flat, so we don't want any extra material, if we can help it, um, maybe blocking that from going in as far as it needs to. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to that cutout toolpath, and we're going to use that allowance offset. So we're going to put in negative allowance, so minus 0 0.03. 
And we're going to go ahead and recalculate that. And we'll preview that visible toolpath. And we'll see what we get. And that looks pretty good. We get rid of all that extra there. So that's great. That's going to make a perfect plug. Now, don't forget, we're going to cut our plugs first and then our pocket because, of course, we need to glue our plug into our pocket. Might seem obvious right now, but it's a super easy mistake to make. So let's close this down and let's go back to our pocket for a second. Now, when it comes to actually surfacing off that plug, once you get it glued into your pocket, there's some things you need to consider. And I've created a little bit of an animation so I could describe some of those things to you. When it comes to surfacing your inlay, it's a very basic pocket toolpath, but there's some things to keep in mind. If you're lucky enough, your plug isn't all that thick, and you can simply go ahead and put in your surfacing bit, zero off your material surface, Make sure that your pocket toolpath has a start depth of zero and a cut depth of zero and go ahead and run that and everything will be fine. If your plug happens to be a bit thick, then you're going to go ahead and do things a little bit different. We all know that we've gone ahead and zeroed our V-bit off of our material surface when we did our initial pocket. Now we're going to do the same with our surfacing bit. We're going to zero off the surface of our material. We're going to move our bit up a distance so we can clear the top of the plug. We're going to reset our Z to zero, but make note of that distance because that's going to be our new cut depth of your surfacing toolpath. Okay, so let me go ahead and run through both scenarios here. First of all, let's talk about a plug that my material is not all that thick and I probably don't need to worry about taking it off in multiple passes. So to do that, I'm going to grab this outside vector, keeping in mind that my plug is actually smaller than this vector because I used that allowance offset when I created my plug. So we can go ahead now as we can go up to our pocket toolpath and I'm going to have a start depth of zero and a cut depth of zero. And I'm gonna go ahead and use that 1 8 inch end mill. And we're gonna call this surface ing. And we can calculate that. And what we're gonna get is a tool path that literally is one pass on the top of my material. So if I preview that, I'm not gonna see anything. But when I run that, once I've zeroed off my material surface and I have my plug glued in there, then it will actually remove the excess plug or the plug that's above my material and give me a nice smooth finish. Now, if for some reason my plug is actually quite thick, like in my example here, then I need to do things slightly different. So I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna zero off my material, then I'm gonna go up a distance and I'm gonna zero my tool again at that height. But that distance that I've moved up is gonna now be my cut depth. So if I decided to go up 0.5 of an inch, then that's going to be my cut depth. And when I go ahead and calculate that, you'll see that actually in my preview, I'm actually cutting into my material. But in reality, I'm going to be up a half inch and cutting on that material surface. Okay. And if I go ahead and preview that, you'll see it's just going to cut down through my material. But don't forget that I'm up actually a half inch. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Doing a V-carve inlay, one color, is really quite easy to do once you have your numbers all sorted out for your start depth and your flat depth of your V-carving. What you might want to do is practice on a couple test parts just to make sure you get those numbers spot on. Okay, now that we've seen how we can do that in the software, creating the inlay on a flat part, Let's go ahead and make it a little bit more exciting by putting that inlay in the bottom of a bowl, just like this. So let's go back into our software and take a look at how we can do that with the parts that I've included inside that file that you're going to get with this project. Okay, let's have a look at this file. Now, it looks a bit different and a lot of things have changed, but one thing that hasn't changed is the vectors that I used or the vectors that we created in the first part of this demonstration are exactly the same as these ones. Nothing has changed at all. So this file has changed in a few different ways, but first of all, let's have a look at our job setup. Now, this is going to be important because that inlay that we just created a minute ago would be great if we were going to cut it into like the top of a chopping board or maybe for a Christmas tree ornament. But in my case, I actually want to put it in the bottom of a dish. And a dish is a two-sided job that will require some 3D components. So let's have a look at the job setup. 
It's now a double-sided job. Obviously, we have various heights and widths and thicknesses of material because this is a multi-sheet job. First of all, on the top side of our job, we're going to zero off our material surface. When we turn our material over, we want to zero off the same side. So that means we're going to have to actually zero our machine off the spoil board. The datum doesn't change any. We're going to flip from bottom to top. I've changed the modeling resolution to be very high because there's 3D content in here. And that's pretty much it for that. So we can just go ahead and click OK. Okay, now we have some extra vectors here now. We've got three vectors here for dowel holes. Of course, this is going to be a double-sided job, so we need a way to be able to flip it over and make sure it all lines up. If this is your first time doing a two-sided job, then Becky is going to be doing a presentation on how to make a table. And she'll be doing a two-sided flip along with a four-sided indexed leg. Definitely going to cover everything you need to know there. For now, we've got those three vectors here to create the dowel holes on the top side. We've got an outline vector here that's actually the shape of our bowl. And then we have a 3D component here. If we take a look at our tile view, you'll see that we have a bowl that's sort of in the shape of the gingerbread man. Now it's a two-sided job, so when I flip it over, you'll see on the back side, we have the back side of the bowl, and we also have some tabs to hold it in place. So the first thing we're going to need to do if, when we cut this bowl is we're going to want to create a roughing and a finishing pass. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to select this vector, and we're going to create a roughing pass. We'll use a quarter inch end mill. We're going to use that selected vector. We're going to go outside that vector a quarter inch. We're going to leave some material behind for our finishing bit to clean off. We're going to use a Z-level roughing strategy, and we're just going to go ahead and name this 3D roughing, and we'll calculate that. Let's go ahead and preview that visible toolpath. That looks really good. Let's close that down, and let's do our 3D finishing toolpath. We're going to use a quarter-inch ball nose here, which is perfectly fine for this bottom of this dish. It's going to end up giving a nice, smooth finish. We're going to use that same vector that we used to do a roughing pass with. We're going to outside that vector an eighth of an inch this time around. We could choose to do a raster toolpath, but I'm going to go ahead and choose an offset toolpath. And we can go ahead and just rename this 3D finishing, and we can calculate that. If we go ahead and preview that visible toolpath. You'll see that we're going to get a nice finish on the bottom of that bowl. And anything that's left over, we can just easily sand out without any issues at all. So that looks great. So let's go ahead now and move these to the top of our toolpath list, because we're going to have to do that roughing first, and then our finishing. And then we can go ahead and do our V-carving. So if we go ahead and turn on these two toolpaths that we've seen before, you'll see that the actual toolpaths are floating in the air above that pocket. Because when we machine them, we machine them right on the surface of our material when we created them before. We don't want that. We want them to be projected into the bottom of this dish. So if we go into our toolpath here, we can go ahead and choose this option at the bottom, project toolpath on the 3D model, and reselect calculate. Of course, we already know that there isn't any material for the clearance tool to get rid of. So we can just go ahead and click OK. And then we'll preview that those toolpaths. And you'll see that now it's cutting it right in the bottom of the bowl where it belongs. Now the surfacing toolpath here is a little bit different again because our plug isn't sitting proud of the surface of material of our material. It's actually inside of this dish. So we need to figure out how deep this dish is. So the first thing we could do, we could look down here at the bottom of my screen where my pointer is, and you'll see that it's about a half an inch deep. Or what I can do is I can select this component and go over to my modeling tab and have a look at my actual component properties. And you'll see that's a little bit deeper than half an inch. So I can just go ahead and copy this out of here, close this down, close this down, and let's have a look at our surfacing toolpath. Now we want to go ahead and have a start depth of zero, but we need to tell it how far to go down. So we're going to paste this in there. One thing to make note of is how far your plug actually rises out of the center of your dish. You might need to take that into consideration when you're doing your surfacing toolpath. Okay, we're going to use that 1 8 inch end mill, which is perfectly fine. Okay, we're going to go ahead and just delete that, and we can calculate that. Then we can preview our visible toolpath, and nothing should change. Exactly right. If we turn that on, you'll see that it's actually going to pocket down to the base of that dish. 
perfectly. So that's great. So we can go ahead and use that to surface off our plug after we glue it in place. Now the next thing we're going to need to do is go ahead and create our dowel holes. So those are easy pocket tool paths using these three vectors. I'm just going to go down the full thickness of our material. We can go ahead and remove that and we'll select a quarter inch end mill. And we can go ahead and just change this to dowel dowel holes. We can calculate that and we can preview our visible tool paths. And you'll see that now we have those dowel holes in place. That's perfect. Let's flip over to the other side. And I have two, three tool paths already made up for us. So we have the dowel holes, which is great, but I want to take a look at this one. This is really important because remember now we're zeroing off our, the bed of our machine or off our waste board or spoil board. So we need to do something that's kind of special here and only for this tool path. We need to tell it the start depth, which is the thickness of our material. And then the cut depth is how deep I want to go into my waste board. Okay. That's really important to remember here that you need to make sure that you tell it the thickness of your material and how far you want to go into your waste board. Okay. We can calculate that. And okay. And you'll see that it's actually looks a little different, but it'll work out. And you'll see that in the end when I actually cut this thing, close that. We can take a look at our 3D roughing and finishing passes again. We'll just preview those both at the same time because you've already seen how I created those for the top side is exactly the same for the bottom side. Except for in this case, what's going to happen is we're going to have some tabs here because we use 3D tabs. And there we have it. Now that's how to do it with a one color inlay. Now I want to take this up a notch and I actually want to create a two colored inlay. So how would I go ahead and do that? So now what would I have to do to create an inlay like this one, where it's actually two colors, two different woods? Well, first of all, I need to create an inlay for the darker material. And then I need to go back and then create an inlay for the lighter material. Let's have a look at my file for this. So as you can see, this is slightly different than the file that we had before. If I look at my layers manager, you'll see that I've got pocket one, pocket two, plug one, plug two, plug cutout and surfacing. Now this pocket matches this plug, this pocket matches this plug, and these two tool paths I'm going to use twice. They're the exact same tool path for each plug. So I didn't need to have two different tool paths or four different tool paths here for these operations. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is we'll have a look at the actual um, plugs that we're going to make. So over here we have six different tool paths. So three for the first plug and three for the second plug. So if we go ahead and tile our views, we can go ahead and have a look at the first three tool paths. So we have our V-carve tool path, we have our clearance tool, then we have a cutout tool. So let's go ahead and preview those three tool paths. And the end result will give us a plug that looks just like this. Now this will give us a nice dark border all the way around our gingerbread man. And then when I go, once we glue this in and we surface it off and I go back in and I cut the areas where the plug needs to go in for the lighter color, which is reflected here in my 2D view so that the eyes, the buttons in his hands, I'm going to pocket those out of here from the other side and I glue them in and they'll be left with just the light plug areas in those spots. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. These are the three tool paths for this plug, for the lighter plug. And there we have it. Now that might not make a whole lot of sense right now, but when I actually cut it and show you in the labs, it will most definitely. So let's go back to our other sheet for our, for a second, which is the bowl sheet. Okay. Now let's quickly go ahead and do the roughing and the finishing. So let's preview those visible tool paths. You know, the first pocketing tool paths we're going to run are going to be these two here. So let's just go ahead and preview those visible tool paths. 
Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to glue in the darker plug. We're going to surface that off running the surfacing toolpath. And then we're going to go ahead and do the next two. We'll glue in that plug, then we'll run the surfacing toolpath again, and then we're golden. Now, hopefully that makes sense. And what I'd like to do is now take this job into the labs and cut it and show you the results. And really, it really is truly easy. Once you get those V-carve inlay numbers dialed in, then you really can't go wrong. So we have all our wood out here. We've got the darker wood here that we're going to use for the outline of the gingerbread man. And then we have the lighter beach over here that we're going to use for his mittens and his buttons. And then I have this piece of oak at the back here that we're going to use for the actual bowl. The first thing we need to do though is to get the two plugs cut and then we can move on to the bowl. So let's go ahead and get the machine set up and get started with those plugs. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the V-bit first and then the 1 8 inch uh, end mill for the clearance. That way hopefully I'll minimize any chipping that I might get in the end. Okay, so we've got the two plugs made. They look really good, I think. I won't know for sure until I actually glue them into the bowl. I'm gonna do a bit of cleanup, but I'm not gonna do that until I start the bowl cutting. So I'm gonna get the material down for the bowl, run the roughing pass, and I'll cut these out and clean them up. So I ran the finishing pass after the roughing pass for the bowl and it looks pretty good. Um, I like the way that it's come up on the edge like I expected it to, that way I know the top of my bowl is nice and flat. You can see at the bottom of this a, a little bit of a line, a radial line that comes out from the center out. If I had have used a step over retract in uh, my finishing pass, I may have been able to minimize that a bit. I'm not too worried about it because I'm going to have to do a bit of sanding in the bottom of the bowl anyway. So um, I'm just, just going to leave it as it is. Now I've done a little bit of cleanup on the first uh, plug that we're going to use, which is the darker wood. I'm pretty happy with it. There's a bit of chipping that's happening, but as long as the chipping is not at the face, this, this side of it, then I think I'm going to be pretty good um, once I get it in there and then do the clearance pass to clear off the top. Um, I, th I think it'll be all right. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the, um, the pocket now, and then we'll glue this in place, uh, and then we're, uh, we'll take it from there.
take off the uh, the weight and that seems to be really secure in there so I think it's dried in there the glue seems to be cured so the next thing I need to do is go in and um, surface this off so I need to actually go in and remove the top of the plug down to the base of my bowl um, I'm lucky that my plug isn't much thicker than my material is that my bowl is sitting into. Um, if you do, then you're going to have to go ahead and figure out a method to make sure that your plug isn't too thick. You don't want to run into it with your bit or anything like that when you're doing this, this actual surfacing tool path. So what I'm going to do now is um, I haven't moved my machine any at all except for back on the Y axis. So what I'm going to do is um, just go ahead and run my uh, surfacing tool path right here. And I'm not even going to re-zero my tool. It should be happy. We're just going to go ahead and surface this off. And then we'll see how it looks once that's done. done surfacing off the plug that was there the plug was a bit thick so it took a little longer than what I expected but uh, that's okay I think that was that was a good idea it looks really good there's a few little tiny gaps around it but I think that's mainly because of the grain of the wood and uh, some of the chipping that happened in the plug so really I couldn't do a whole lot about that maybe I could have chosen a different kind of material but anyway that aside it looks really good so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run the V bit and the clearance tool so we can go ahead and do the same with this maple plug um, and we'll let that cure overnight with the glue once once that's done we'll have to glue this in place and let it cure overnight and then we'll go ahead and um, surface it tomorrow and hopefully flip the bowl over and do the backside and we'll see how it goes yeah. So we left this overnight to, uh, to glue up um, and it seems to be, it's done its job. So let's go ahead now and surface this um, plug down and we'll see what the result is and hopefully it'll all look really good. We surfaced off the maple plug and it looks really good. I did a little bit of a, uh, vacuuming and then we had a little, just a little bit of sanding. But in order to really see what it looks like, I'm going to give a little spray of water and that way it'll give us a simulation of what it's going to look like when we do a bit of finishing. So I'm just going to do that now. Oh yeah, that looks all right. That looks really, really good. Really, really super happy with that. Anything, any little problems that I see are mainly because I think of the quality of the darker wood that I used. But overall, it looks really nice. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut in the dowel holes on our actual uh, material. Then we're going to take the material off the table. We're going to do our dowel holes into the into this uh, spoil board, flip over our, our wood, and then we're going to cut the back of the bowl. So the next time we'll t we talk, we should have the bowl actually physically in my hands. <laughs>
So there we have it. I I'm really happy with that. I think out of all the inlays I've done so far here at Vectric, this one's turned out the best. I like the different colors. I might have chosen maybe to put black buttons on them instead in the end. But overall, I think it looks really, really good. Some of the things I might actually change in the future is I might thicken up the bowl a little bit, which I'll do in the file for you. And um, I would also go ahead and choose a different material personally for this darker wood. I think it was a bit chippy, but overall, it looks pretty neat. Now, I've not only just included this bowl with this particular project and this icon, I've also included it in a bunch of other different icons and other bowl shapes. So you can go ahead and create bowls for, and inlays for all kinds of different occasions. Let's just go ahead and jump back into the software again and we'll take a quick run through all the things that I've included in that final file for you. So this is the final file that I'm going to include in with the 2023 user group pack. Now, I'm really excited about this. There's lots of stuff in here. Um, I've really gone to a lot of work to give you a file that is going to be really versatile and it will allow you to create lots of nice different inlays. So first of all, you get the gingerbread dish and the inlay that goes along with it. If we take a look at our sheets, I'm also gonna give you a ring bowl with the rings for a two color inlay. I'm gonna give you the cookie and a cookie bowl for a nice cookie bowl inlay. We've got some keys and a key bowl for your car if you'd like. I'm gonna give you olive dish with an olive inlay which again is pretty fancy. We got a change bag to go in your change dish if you want to. And then I've given you a whole sheet of icons here that you can go ahead and create inlays for. Now these are all done with all the tooling that you need and they're all two colored inlays. So two different materials for your inlays. Now you can easily go ahead and backwards engineer these to be just a one color inlay if you would like to because i've shown you how to do that already anyway i hope you have lots of fun with this file i had lots of fun creating it let's quickly go over what i've covered in this video i've shown you basically how to create a v-carve inlay and then project that into a bottom of a bowl now this project is included in the purchasable pack that you can buy that accompanies this 2023 ugm meeting if you have any questions, please leave them below. If you have any comments, I'd like to hear those as well. Um, and until next time, happy making. And uh, if you make these, make sure you post them someplace where you can see them. Okay, sadly, that brings us to the end of this year's Vetric Online User Group Meeting. I hope you, you found it uh, interesting and entertaining and, and hopefully inspiring. Uh, my head is always, always buzzing uh, with new ideas at the end of a user group meeting from all of the techniques that I've seen presented uh, and some of the things that people have produced, the projects that they've made. Uh, I'll obviously be letting that soak in over the next couple of weeks. Uh, and I, um, I always learn something new at a, a user group meeting. It's, it's worth highlighting that because you might imagine that having been involved in writing the, the software for so many years, that uh, there wouldn't be much that I would, would, would learn myself from these things. But I always do because when we make a software tool or feature, we have in mind what, what, what we'd be used for and how it will be used. But we're always amazed by the creativity with which uh, people apply those tools. And so I always learn something new about how something can be used differently from the way I perhaps first thought, or more effectively, or to achieve a, an end goal that I never thought was possible. So I, I'm really impressed um, um, with the variety of, of techniques and projects that we've seen on display in the last two days. And so it's with great delight that I want to make special thanks to our guest speakers. Um, so I want to thank uh, Mike, uh, Mike Kempfer, as well as uh, Michael Tyler, the two Michaels, for their uh, work on um, at the beginning of the sessions, uh, and Mike for his uh, presentations in German, which we really appreciated. I want to thank Eric uh, and Stone and Randy and George and Elaine, as well as uh, Router Bob, uh, Matt and Johnny, the brothers make, and Olivier for all of their contributions. Uh, and like I say, we're especially um, grateful for um, being able to do some of our presentations in French and German for the first time. And we hope that uh, if English is not your first language, that we are working towards making some of these presentations more accessible. Um, so thanks again to the presenters that were able to do that for us. My team, uh, I'm also grateful to, and of course, there was the in front of camera team, 
so thanks to Todd and Becky. And also thanks to um, Charlotte and uh, Ollie and David, for whom this is not their day job as well. So um, Becky and Todd um, did brilliantly. And as you know, they uh, present loads of our videos for training and um, uh, and our user group meetings previously. But for the other members of the team, it's not their primary focus. And so we do appreciate the extra stress that uh, volunteering to get involved in this user group meeting brings along with it. So thank you. Thank you for your efforts there. Uh, behind the scenes, there was also, as you can imagine, quite a lot of activity from the marketing team in general. So they produced uh, the, um, the organizational aspects of getting the user group meeting together, as well as the arts and the front end for our user group meeting website. And they also were, uh, were involved in the production and editing of all the videos. So thanks to the marketing team. I know it's been a busy few weeks um, in the run up to this. Behind the scenes, even more than that though, is the development team. So the user group meeting website involves quite a lot of custom uh, work for the development team to allow us to have those interactive elements. So for people to be able to exchange uh, information about their projects, to have the comments and the um, discussion areas. So uh, often it's they're the unsung heroes because mostly we only notice when some of these things go wrong. So when they go right, it's worth pointing out that that, that does not happen by accident. That's because the development team have done a, a great job in making stuff sure that all that stuff works. So thanks for, to them as well. And finally though, and perhaps most importantly, I want to thank you, all of you for joining us over the last two days and making this a truly interactive uh, user group meeting. Um, I know that I've been following you know, your uh, willingness to uh, contribute your own projects and comments and ideas, and it never ceases to amaze me how friendly and knowledgeable and helpful the Vectric community is. And it's a real credit to you all, and I want to thank you again for that. Next year, we will be looking to run the user group meeting in person again in the US. Uh, we'll, there'll be more details to follow on our website. So please do look out for the announcements in the coming weeks about the, uh, the final location for that uh, and, uh, and other details as they emerge. But in the meantime, we'll also be doing a number of um, CNC and woodworking shows and events um, throughout the year. So please do check in on our events page and our event schedule. Uh, and if you find yourself uh, local to one of the events where you can see the Vectrix attending or you yourself are going to attend one of the events, please do come along uh, and introduce yourself at the stand. We'd love to meet you. Um, we always enjoy having the opportunity to have a chat with, uh, with our customers at these shows in person. And I look forward to meeting as many of you in person as possible. Until then, uh, thanks again. And bye for now.